So this video was originally planned to be this fancy, perfect setup, and it's nothing of the sort. Think of it like a voice note to a friend. I've written some notes down to try and keep things a little bit structured, but I'm not very good with words, so I apologise in advance. I know you've seen the title of the video. It's probably not as dramatic as I'm making it out to be, but metaphorically in my head, it is that dramatic, and you'll see why. I feel like all my life I've been the odd one out. I've grown up queer in an Indian household, in a culture that never really understood being queer. This made me grow up playing two versions of myself. The more genuine version of myself in front of my friends, and then the more subdued version of myself in front of my family. And I had comments growing up that I would wear clothes that were too girly or made me look a certain way and I was really hyper aware of a lot of stuff. Another one was the choices I made at GCSEs. I wanted to do drama and then I wanted to do psychology at A-levels and then do subjects that weren't conventional, weren't to help me go down the doctor route or the dentistry route or the medicine route. And... I toyed and I fought so hard to do what I really wanted to do. I was also the first to openly struggle with my mental health and be very vocal about them. I struggled at uni, I hated uni, and I didn't do a degree that was conventional. No one had done psychology before. I was also the first one of my family, I think, to encourage discussions and try to get people to change their views, which has led to a lot of fallings out. We've seen the 2020 space of everything that happened and all the difficult conversations that we've had to have. It made me lose a lot of friends, but I also realised what certain members of my family were like, and it really made me distance myself and really shut down. That negativity and those views from other people eventually bogged me down and started to make me question whether I was just being this person that was just trying to make the world a great place and everyone was against me. And it made me defeated. It made me question all my morals. It made me question whether I was a good person because I gave up. I feel like I've always fought with this idea of being the perfect son. And as I get older, I realise that I've fallen short of that expectation. I'm going to give credit to my parents because they have got better at fighting cultural pressures and lessons that they grew up believing. But it came at a time where I'd grown up and was no longer looking for that validation. I was at a point where I was like, you know what? I've made peace with it and I'm not looking for all the stuff that I was looking for when I was younger. Being from a culture like mine, you have these expectations from your parents, but also your relatives. Those you know, those you don't, those you've never met. It feels like a cauldron of opinions all the time. It becomes a case of whose kid is doing the best, and you put your kids against each other, and then the parents look bad if the kids aren't doing well, or doing what's conventional, and it's just so exhausting and toxic. As much as I say I don't care about what my parents think of me, deep down I do. I feel like there's the child still craving for that attention and that validation and that emotional support and that I'm proud of you. But I know I'm never going to get it, so I need to make peace with that. That's no fault on my parents, that's just because of the culture we are from and the way I've been brought up and the way they've been brought up. And I don't blame them, I don't hold it against them anymore. Because we're all learning. This leads me on to the present. Over the last few years, I've been lucky enough to travel to a variety of different countries. We've also faced a worldwide pandemic, and that's brought everything to a standstill. And it's given me a chance to stand still, reflect, and look for what mattered to me the most. I was also facing really serious health issues. And a personal loss during the pandemic, coupled with my health issues, reiterated the fact that life is incredibly short. Earlier this year, I got let go from a job that I had no passion doing. It went against everything I wanted for myself. But I got up each day and I went to work because at some point I had to grow up because I'd heard that all my life. And fun fact, uh, this is important to the story later on. The way I would go to work every morning listening to Break My Soul, we'll get back to that. I went against everything that my heart was telling me when I was in this role. And I went into this job with one goal, to save up enough money to get out of here and do what I really want to do. So when I was let go, I genuinely drove home shaking and then got home and just burst into tears. I felt like I was a hypocrite taking the job and telling everyone to follow their dreams and follow their hearts, doing what they want to do and what their passions are and quit their nine to five and everything and all of that whilst I was doing something that I didn't want to do. I felt like a fraud. I felt lost. I felt overwhelmed. So as you can see, my brain was fried. So when I came home and burst into tears, I felt like I'd just taken the last couple of years of my whole life and it all just spanned together in that moment 
and she just came crashing down on me. And me and my dad don't have the greatest relationship, but he offered some really wise words. And also, somehow, I got my validation from him because he finally said, let go and just do what makes you happy now. There was something that I was looking for all my life and to finally hear someone that I wasn't as close to anymore come and tell me, come and tell the child that it was okay and it was okay to do something that made you happy. As all of this kind of comes to a summary, I've reached a point where I had to make a decision. Through this video that I'm releasing now, even though it's very basic, I hope I've been able to verbalise to some degree my story and how I actually got to this point. This will never do justice to the depth of heartache and tears this journey has left me with, but I'm at a point in life where I want to prioritise the living part of life. Be gone to expectations from far and inside. I find my place of happiness. I just hope the universe allows this plan to be as fruitful as I'd hoped. Time is short. It's time to experience joy. Circling back to break my soul. That song has been my mantra since it came out, but it's also been a sort of retrospective remedy in more ways than one. Listening to it every morning on the way to work earlier this year, it reminded me to forget everything and just keep going, keep grinding. When I finally did let go, I let go. Related to the story, I was able to see Beyonce earlier this year four times on the Renaissance World Tour, which I didn't think was going to happen because of my health issues. I'm so grateful to have been able to. So the day I lost my job and the day I saw B again were the days I genuinely made peace with myself and I let myself be free. I'd say the day I lost my job was more of the day where I really sat down and said, okay, what do we need to do? What's the plan? Pull everything together. And I think seeing B again was that reaffirmation and that kind of cherry on top. The decision you've made is the right decision and it's now time to be joyful. She says be free in the tour a lot. Be free from all of the shit I've been carrying. Nothing in this life is worth living miserable for. The search for healing came from something already living inside me. This deep passion for freedom. I urge everyone to find their joy. And I hope you join me on this next chapter that I'm about to take on.